Steve, a happy belated Independence Day to you, sir, and welcome to the program. Well, Sheila, thank you so much. You know, as we've just celebrated in the United States, uh, the 4th of July, our whole Independence Day, I want to put people into remembrance of something. If you look at the country, when all of its inhabitants pretty much paid tribute to what our forefathers set up in this great country of ours with uh, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, obviously even going back to, to the Declaration of Independence, and the attack that's upon the foundations of the United States, upon upon all of our founding fathers, the slander, the total divorcing of this generation, let's just call it the tech generation, from historic reality, empiric reality, and history, I blame the public education because they have been used by the communist revolutionaries, you know this, that the goal was always to get a hold of a generation that within 40 years of that generation they could change the face of this nation. And I've noticed, and you can see it in the articles and everything, but people just don't seem to care anymore. And by the way, most of the 20-year-olds that 30-year-olds can't even explain what the 4th of July is all about. But we're talking now about is the virtual world versus the real world. Now, I'll call that empiric world. In order for Satan to control humanity that's fallen, he has to set up something totally in direct opposition to what the living God intended for us to experience. And I call that empiric reality. He's also had to destroy language and interfere with communication on a personal level. So many people, Sheila, don't even talk anymore, even to their spouses. They text them. Yeah. So all forms of continuity of thought have been and are being cut off. And so that's the great divorce, even beyond what C.S. Lewis was talking about. The implementation of the destruction of mankind is underway, and that's why I wrote Terminated, the end of man is here. The number one goal in everything that Satan has done is to destroy the image and likeness of God. Mankind created after, how do I say this, after the judgment on the world that was before, that even the disciples talk about, the, the golden age, prior to the creation of Adam and Eve. But if you look at the plans of Satan with the fallen angels having sex with earth women, producing giants, you know, people say, why are you on this giant thing, Quail? Because Jesus told us about the days of Noah, and they, they forget one word, corruption. So now we're going beyond the corruption, just sexual and the immorality and all of the demonic influence. We're going into the transhumanist movement, and we're going into singularity. In essence, the powers of darkness want the last vestiges of humanity wiped out. And Jesus, if you got a problem with what I'm saying, take it up with Jesus, because he said if the days weren't shortened, there'd be no flesh left alive. And Sheila, that's where we're at now. Yes, agree. Well, you wrote Xenogenesis, you wrote Genetic Armageddon, now you throw in the mix Terminated. What you're laying out in these books here, really, Steve, especially Terminated, I've got it, haven't finished it yet, but this, folks, is the stuff of nightmares. Steve, you really lay out nicely the imminent destruction that really lies before us. We're at a really crucial precipice. And again, like you say in your book, Terminated, these murderous secret plans of Satan's minions, these Luciferian elite, their agenda is to do one thing, terminate us, period. And, th and that's not a cutesy phrase, Steve. No, and, and again, having been at the Sheila for, you know, 25 years as a newsletter writer, probably 10 years before that, so 35, I've been at this half of my life. I'm 67 in August. But what I think is interesting, I made this statement, and I said, outside of writing about ancient history and ancient finds, you know, I'm pretty much done. In other words, terminated is a statement of finality. And what Tom Horn and I have done, and, and isn't it interesting, and I mean, I salute your programming, you had him on yesterday, me today, and what God is, people need to understand this. I don't talk to Tom and say, Tom, I'm writing a book called Terminated, the End of Man. He didn't write to me and tell me until after the book was written, Mel you and I, he and I talked about that, and he probably explained what the Mel you was on your show the other yeah, day. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yep. And so, you know, we don't talk, yet God brings us together, and he will at Branson, the conference, we'll talk about that later, along with some of the great minds in transhumanism. The whole desire, the whole design is to make men God, independent of the God who created them, with no answerability or no responsibility to the former creation. Now, I'm saying that because this is, I'm not going to write Terminated 2. 
to be continued was the last thing I put in my book, the, you know, the last three words, I think. And the, the issue is simply this, that the headlines are happening so fast momentarily that I can't keep up with them anymore. And I believe based on Isaiah 46 that God says he is the Lord, declaring the end at the beginning, that I can follow suit. And that's what Jesus uh, was doing in the book of Revelation. And obviously, he's my example. We've got to tell the things that are, which will be coming, and the things that will be hereafter. There are three different time periods. So what I'm saying in a long-winded way is that we simply are at that point of termination, no flesh left alive, and the contempt that these people have for God, for Jesus, and for Christians is accelerating. So they are on their way to total terminal extinction. And unfortunately, she, you know, the churches don't believe this, they don't teach it, and they're not preparing the people of God to deal with, a, if you will, what I would call techno-possession. When machines become demon-possessed, the first example of that would have been Talos, created in the time of the Greek gods, the Titans, the Olympians. And the follow-through of robotics, even through the film and cinema, Terminator, I think James Cameron did an amazing job job of showing people Skynet. We now have Google. I've warned about Facebook. And ladies and gentlemen, now you understand why I'm calling it faces of death. You can hate me, you can hate the message, but you can't deny the fact that everything you have placed about your life on Facebook, for those of you who have, everything you've shared, your best friends, your entire network, your heart network, those people that you pour your heart out to, strangers are going over every single emotion you've displayed. Every single word, and they're building, if you will, an artificial construct of you, and then they're running the artificial construct of you through massive programming on supercomputers. So in essence, Sheila, people are already being assassinated in a computer program to be carried out at some near point in the future. Do you think many people can even begin to embrace that thought? Uh, n no, no, not even close. And which is why, Steve, I find it interesting. You and I both featured an appendix in our books, the open letter that Tom Horn sent to leaders on transhumanism. He was so concerned and so alarmed by this dystopic trance, this mind-numbed slumber that the church seems to be in. It's like a mind-blinding spirit, Steve. But Tom wrote this open letter because I don't think that Christians are getting this at all. Transhumanism really is transitioning away from being human. I think when you step back and take a macro view, you think people are comprehending that one, Steve? No, and unfortunately, you probably deal with it better than I do because I become cynical and jaded, which, by the way, is wrong. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm dealing with that on attitude. And I will say this. I'm going to get to write a book, and I just, no, it won't be like anything else. It'll be kind of like tears, and I'm not pitching it. It won't be available until December, but the Lord laid on my heart to write a book on Jesus like no other book that's ever been written. Now, that's a big claim. Wow. But I also got it instantly. And so, you know, one of the things I really believe, Sheila, is that the reason there's so many lies that humanity is embracing, the lies that are being embraced by humanity are setting humanity up for the destruction. They forgot one person, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, look, I make no apologies, and I thank God neither do you. The churches are responsible. Many of the famous, if you will, 150-year-old preachers would always say that if Christianity were to die, in America, it would die because the pulpits are dead. That's my version. But the point being is that we're at now a total embrace by them who are claimants to Christianity of every foul and unclean spirit that has been able to deceive them because of one thing, they have denied the testimony of Jesus. Now, I can tell you this, if you're in seeker-friendly churches, everybody's welcome except Jesus. I was talking to a man the other day who I love, I won't use his name because, you know, number one, it's irrelevant, but most people would know the name, and he basically said the same thing, and I met him. He's raised up to write a book on the warriors, godly warriors, men, first and foremost, to step up to the plate. But he was told by a missionary organization, South America, and here they said, you've won more people to the Lord, the kids have turned around, 
the power of God is present, but you've got to leave. And he said, why do I have to leave? He, they said, point blank, because you talk about Jesus too much. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, and so I thank God for him. Jamie, God bless you, that's his first name. The fact that People are so... Now, remember, this is a Christian organization, a missionary organization. The guy and his wife are having the power of God, lives transformed for Jesus. Even those kids who have grown up are calling him, seeking out Jamie, saying, thank you for bringing us to Jesus. I know of no greater compliment. I know of no greater thanksgiving to give to the Lord when someone says, thank you for bringing me to Jesus. Amazing, huh? Being kicked out of somewhere for talking about Jesus too much. Yeah, well, in a few days, my friend who was arrested in Canada for preaching the Gospels coming on. The scripture really clearly, Steve, presents Jesus as a rock of offense, a stumbling stone to all of those who reject his lordship. They stumble because they disobey the message. And boy, isn't that ubiquitous today? I mean, we offend people just by opening our mouths. And Paul says what? I've become your enemy because I tell you the truth. People don't understand that are listening the amount of ugliness and nastiness that you have to deal with when you're called to be a watchman, where you're exposing the deeds of darkness. People cannot comprehend the absolute nastiness and the ugliness that we have to deal with. Let me ask you a really, I think this is going to be a difficult question for you to answer because no one, Steve, looks at the amount of staggering headlines that you do with all the headlines that you look at and with all the information that you've written and wrote about and chronicled what in this whole entire transhuman. Stay here. I'll be back. In the book of Genesis, ye shall be as gods, ye shall not surely die. The number one and two positions of the transhumanist, quoting Zoltan Isfahan, which I do in my book, he said, at the heart of the matter, this paraphrasing, transhumanists want to live forever. When Ray Kurzweil wrote uh, Singularity and wrote he, when he wrote The Age of Spiritual Machines, and I would tell anyone this, and Sheila, I got this just the other day, because I've written about spirituality, I've written about, obviously, technology, but here's, I want everyone to ponder this and take it to the Lord in prayer. He said, Steve, you cannot separate technology from spirituality. Wow. Sheila, I mean, I just was odd. I'm, you know, I mean, I delight in it, but he blows my mind with simple words. You know, and what that simply means, if you go to the book of Enoch and there are people challenging Tom Horn and I, you know, nobody's telling us to defend our position. They hate the book of Enoch. You know, the Enoch, book of Enoch was in the Old Testament, still in the Ethiopian scriptures. You know, it was removed. I'm not saying all the pseudepigraphal works are anointed, but the book of Enoch, the book of giants, where they were found in the different caves of Qumran, the Qumran scrolls, and there are people that challenge everything. Jesus quoted a powerful statement, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will. What volume of books? What's he talking about? So the early church fathers accepted this. So what you're looking at, I want to dissect that statement. You cannot separate technology from spirituality. You go into the book of Enoch and you see point blank that all technology and the advanced technology was given by fallen angels. So I watch and I look and I learn. Robotics already handled, you know, 250 years before the birth of Jesus, already dealt with. Artificial life forms, by the way, that's what the Colossus of Rhodes was really, it was the literal statue of Talos, T-A-L-O-S, the giant that was given, quote, uh, life by the uh, creator of Zeus. And Zeus is not Jesus. The name Jesus Yeshua existed before Zeus ever came on the scene. The idea simply is that the technology we now see today, how did Francis Bacon know that we'd be dealing with robots? So see, the secret societies, and here's what's key. Oh, Lord, help me to, uh, to make this clear. Secret societies believe, whether they're the Masons, the Rosicrucians, the Tool Society, they believe they are saved through Gnosis. 
Gnosis is the Greek word for Gnostic. And so that means that when you get secret knowledge, you become part of this elite that somehow rules the planet and has uh, eternal life apart from God. You can be as pervert a puppy as you want, and God forbid, and, and literally spare the poor animals because the same things that took place prior to the creation of Adam and Eve. If people want to go look at this, they need to look up. There's a war about that. Sure, I believe the earth as created is recreated in Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2. That's only 6,000 years ago. But prior to that, there was an angelic creation on this planet that went back hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions, and that's the golden age of man. They call it the golden age of man. It should be just called the golden age of fallen angels. Let me correct what I said there. And so why is all this important? Because, Sheila, I've been told by very high-ranking members of the military and intelligence community that the total goal is to get the same weaponry that the ancients used, and I said, well, hey, it failed for them. What makes them think that it's going to succeed? To make war against God and his angels. See, it's not just us. There's a war going on in heaven, and that war on heaven now is transferring to earth, and we're seeing new categories of evil spirits. We're seeing new principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness on earthly places. A spiritual war waged on our physical plane. I would guess Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of this present darkness, I, I'm just paraphrasing, is related to the very war on earth that we're now experiencing and the perversion on earth where every boundary, and here's the key, every God-loving boundary that he created for the benefit of his creation is being distorted and destroyed in order to bring about the end of mankind. So that's why I say terminated the end of man. If I might, I think people need to understand something. I know there are those who call me a doom porn purveyor, all this stuff. But I think people are going to be surprised, in, uh, and I'd encourage you to read the last chapter of, of my book, because I've never gone into the detail I went into about my calling. I didn't pick up the mantle of a watchman. No way. I didn't know what one was. I didn't pick up a ministry of Joseph. No way. I don't know any of this stuff until Jesus got a hold of my life, in literally in the flesh, in a physical appearance before me, and he baptized me in his Holy Spirit. Now, people say I'm a bloody liar. They say I'm an effing liar. Sorry, but let's just be blunt. They call me every name in the book. They speak evil against me at everything. People say, you don't need to be defensive. No, I'm telling you this. Look beyond Look beyond the slander, look beyond the ridicule, and look to a, a track record. I could not have known this. It is nothing that a man could have known that many years ago, in my case, 46 years ago, and then until last year, Sheila, you know, I didn't release a lot of things that the Lord had told me, what, four and a half decades ago, and I still can't release some things, and I find it's interesting. Now I understand. A time period has to exist wherein the context of his revelation can stand against the events of the day and also the technology of the day. Come on, let's face it. Do you think people accepted when I was talking about genetic Armageddon uh, years ago, I think, what, 15, 18 years ago, that robots would be having sex and men would be abandoning women? And someone says, well, I, don't, I think you talk about sex too much. Oh, yeah? That's what lured the fallen angels out of heaven that kept not their first estate. And to set the record straight, when Jesus said they are neither given or taken in marriage, but are the angels in heaven, that's in heaven. That doesn't have anything to do with earth. So herein lies the problem. The church that Tom wrote his open letter to, and I, I just give you kudos for also including it in your book, is that it is the heartfelt revelation by what I believe in. Look, Tom's my friend, but I want to share something. In my opinion, he is one of the brightest, most articulate men in the world, yeah. okay? And for the record, at Branson, Sheila, he will be the last speaker. And, uh, you know, it's important because what... I believe Branson, the Transhumanism and Hybrid Age Conference, is all about, and I'm going to go on record as saying this, after September, 
you know, I don't know the time period, is it one month or two months, all hell is going to break loose in the transhumanism, hybrid, demonic infiltration manifestation on Earth, where the machines, the robots, everything that you know as AI, we know as AI, it's going to start becoming more predominant and preeminent in lives. And you think Alexa's bad, imagine what's going to be prominent. Now, here's why I believe I can make that statement. We now live in the context of time in which people can embrace things they just blew off as that's too far out. Well, now the too far out is brought literally to where most people live within. And so that conference is so specific. And the reason it's relevant. Now, I say these conferences are different than every other, or every other person's conference is because we are focusing on what those of us who are praying, seeking, and being prompted of the Lord to draw attention to are trying to equip the saints for the days ahead. And if God's called some of us to be teachers, some of us to be as Pastor Langford, an evangelist, obviously pastor, teacher, a God-called man. Tom Horn raised up for such a time as this. Timothy Alberino is talking about the interference and the relationship between flying saucers, the technology, the abductions, all that stuff. We've got Richard Dolan who's the world's expert on off-planet events taking place. You know, everybody doesn't believe in off-planet civilizations. You know, I never had so much flack before when I start talking about stargates, etc. Even though technology has already achieved that, we're seeing the events unfold. We're bringing Hugo de Garris from China at great expense who basically is talking about Giga Death. Now, this is one of the artificial brain creators' top three guys. Yeah. And he said, I'm moving from atheist to agnostic. And he's worried about Giga Death. There's Terrans and Cosmos. And if you want to go up and read about Hugo, it was a blessing to have him. And so we're not just bringing in the same old voices. We're bringing in new voices, but some of us have been ahead of the new voices for decades. But in order to take it out of that, well, that's just a Christian perspective. It has nothing to do with that. It's a matter of life and death. So ladies and gentlemen, please go and sign up. G-E-N-S-I-X dot com for live streaming for the Branson Conference. And I think we've got now, we've got 300 seats left at Branson. We're still months away. So if you can't attend, you can go on Gen6, G-E-N-S-I-X dot com's website and sign up for it. And it's going to be, it's going to be so unusual. People claim that it was the best conference they ever attended last year. And this one's even going to be wild, Sheila. We have uh, Mark Patrick, uh, who's literally formed a 13-foot giant based on Buffalo Bill Cody's being dictated to by the Native Americans, the story of what's on my True Legends book of the giants that were so big they grab buffaloes under their arms, run at 40 miles an hour, and basically eat the buffalo on the run, you know, wow. just ripping them apart. So why is this critical? Because that DNA of those giants is the most sought-after commodity, along with the ancient flying machines, the ancient technology, in order to incorporate it into the beasts that we're going to be dealing with as Christians. And, you know, we're seeing now the acceleration of technology even on the uh, front page of Matt Drudge today, they're talking about extinct rhinoceros. Well, I dealt with the extinction-level stuff coming back, you know, 18 years ago. People will accept that the mammoths can be reconstituted, even dinosaurs can be reconstituted, but they can't accept the concept that they are already destined for termination. And can I, now I'll blow your mind, Sheila, I've never said this before. Can any of you on Facebook imagine meeting your own virtual entity that has been cloned that's exactly like you without the human spirit, but your mannerisms and everything, I don't think one in a million people can embrace that. Yet that's where we're headed. We talk about replacement theology. We better be talking about replacement humanity. Gee, replacement theology or replacement humanity. You always coin the good ones. But, you know, that is right there so true. Even Tom Horn and I yesterday on the program were talking about, think about this, folks. Robots mating with humans and creating biological offspring. What we're talking about here is not editing genes. We're talking about editing humans. This is human 2.0 cooked up right in Hell's Kitchen. This is the stuff of sci-fi, Steve. 
Yeah, and I maintain that all all sci-fi, all science fiction, is the outpicturing of the control entities. I want to make this statement. On the human level, sure, there's a shadow government. There are people. I maintain that the fallen angels, look, only 200 of the fallen angels were bound in... Uh, everlasting chains of darkness. Those are the 200 that came on Mount Hermon after the flood, you know, destroyed the human race. And the reason they were after the flood is obviously where do you think King Og and all of those guys came from, including Goliath and his brothers? So when we're talking about borgicated, we're talking about being assimilated into a, if you will, non-God-created body that the devil rules and reigns through because you've already given yourself over to him in order to accept the mark of the beast. And I'll tell you something that Tom Horn, it may have been Nita Horn, brought out to everybody's attention, including mine, is no one before, I believe, this revelation, see, it was time-sensitive, no one ever made the statement that taking the mark of the beast, okay, would change a human DNA genome uh, set to the point where it could no longer be human. So it can't be saved. So when that guy, that entity in Rome, who says more hateful about God and the Holy Scriptures and everything, and even babies, and, and speaks not up about the pedophilia or the perversion. Now, let me claim this, too. Uh, through all my years of study, whether people want to argue with it or not, all of the perversions we're seeing today were generated by the fallen angels. Historians, up to a couple thousand years B.C., talked about, literally, the giants had comely women. They preferred the consort of each other. I think it was Diodorus that said that. So we're, where we're at right now, in my opinion, now why is this important? This isn't Sheila Zelensky just interviewing me, Steve Quayle, to basically scare you in any way. To equip the saints. The saints have been basically, uh, here you go, nudicated, okay? <laughs> that's, that's just for you, Sheila. N-U-D-I-C-A-T-E-D. Nudicated of the preparation, stripped of the preparation they should have been given to deal with such perverse entities that are now, now released on the earth. And you know, I, when I talk about AI, the technical term is artificial intelligence. I call it antichrist intelligence. And in chapter 14, this is really important. I, I said, the darling of deception, destruction, and damnation. People always quote, you're just a better Christian because you don't realize that we're going to create a better world. Show me that in history. Show me where any technology that has had a military use has ever been for the betterment of mankind. They'll say, well, look at atomic power, and I'll say, look at the Pacific Ocean and Fukushima. I said, we've been fooked. F-U-Q-U-E-D. Sorry, some people said, well, if you were a real Christian, you wouldn't use those kind of terms. I said, well, if you were a real Christian, you get real. Uh, uh, Charlie the Tuna, for those of you that grew up in my generation, is no longer able to stand and give you the wink and talk about how great Starkiss Tuna is. And I remember I used to eat Starkiss white albacore tuna all the time. And now the sea, a third of the life in the sea, is dying. When Fukushima first happened, within two days, I said that. Somebody took me to town ask on one of the devil boards, that's a bulletin board, say it's not a third of the sea, the Pacific Ocean. It is when you deal with uh, flowing in to some of the big tributaries, yeah. you know. So can I tell you something? I would say this to everyone. You better get over not listening to me or whoever's telling you, because I'm not the only voice. Sheila's not the only voice. David Langford's not the only voice. Tom's not the only voice. But you know what's interesting? The people that knock us, do you realize, and I want people to understand this, we are up against AI advanced intelligence in addition, coupled with some of the most sophisticated evil entities in the world. That's why I say pray about it. I'm praying that God gives people the spirit of revelation and the understanding in order to acknowledge Jesus. And I think it becomes imperative, Sheila, that people understand that the dark and demonic possession of robots in all shapes, forms, and functions has already taken place. But it's nothing new. It's taken place in the past. It's in my chapter 15, Ghosts and the Machines. It becomes imperative. It becomes necessary to make people understand that AI in itself, through standard computer programming, cannot produce consciousness. That means initiate it. It can mock it. It can reflect it. It can uh, mimic it. But it cannot produce it. Yet an entity, the ghost in the 
the machine, and let's just call it an evil spirit in the machine, can take on everything. So, you know, again, I, I hope people go back and listen to this twice, because what I've said on your program, I've never said before. All of you who are on the Faces of Death book, they're actually generating artificial construct entities that at some point they can do and they have done this i maintain a lot of the politicians are already replaced they're the replacements there's a whole private story on that i'd share with you but i won't share it publicly quite candidly most people wouldn't believe it so the thing is is that we are at a point now like no other terminated and if people get mad at me i wonder if they even believe in jesus because i'll say one thing if jesus himself said that if he didn't shorten the days there'd be no flesh alive and you know Know what the word flesh is in Greek and Hebrew, you'll understand he's talking about that which is creating his image. And on the cover of my book, I want to share something. It's a terminated uh, robot, different than obviously the original Terminator robot, but there's a laser scanner coming out of his forehead, and it's reading a subdural, if you will, like chip that's been on the skull. It will not be enough to kill humans. They will take those chips and they cease to be humans when they take the mark of the beast. How many people have you ever heard say that, Sheila? Well, yeah, that's the first time I've ever heard someone say it that way, that when you take the mark, you cease to be human, which therefore then you're not eligible for salvation. That's frightening right there. You know, I just thought of something as you were talking, Steve. It says, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Well, that's what we're talking about right there is what happens if you're not man anymore? You know, some of these Hollywood hybrids, I think some of them are some type of, you can call them reptilians. I call them demons. These things are not human. And it's no wonder that they're all in an uproar about Trump's SCOTUS pick. I mean, when you're cutting off the food source to bail with all these bloodthirsty, blood sacrificing demons, who, by the way, have no problem ripping children from the womb, but they're sad when they get ripped from their mother's arms. It's absolutely abhorrent, Steve. Yes, it is. It, it just is astonishingly wicked, you know? And when I say that astonishingly wicked is that the human mind, and, and how did the church deal with that? Let's just deal with this statement, you know? And the Catholic Church was the most outspoken up until this pope against abortion, yeah. okay? And most of the Protestants were cowards, okay? But now the war, and for the record, I said it years ago, I said the war that's coming into the Catholic Church will turn into a physical fighting war. You'll have traditional Catholics, and you'll have the ones that will uh, openly embrace the New World Order, you know, the revision Catholicism that's now taking place. And um, when I said that, Sheila, I know I said that exact. Uh, phrase 25 years ago, most people would not have even thought it. You know, up until a couple popes ago, they wouldn't even embraced it. Now, I want to I give everybody a quote from Jules Verne, who was an insider's insider, okay? It's chapter 16, Autonomous Robotic Battlefield, Targeted Human Extinction Accelerates. That's the title of my chapter. In consequence of inventing machines, men will be devoured by them. Okay, wow. now remember, you had Bacon, Francis Bacon, talking about robots, flying machines, all this stuff. Nikola Tesla, Einstein considered him the uh, smartest man in the world. And I'm just quoting now from my own book. Every step that mankind takes in developing machines with artificial intelligence is a step closer Closer to our own demise. And soon, far from being innate objects, these machines will become more intelligent, more human-like, more personable, and a dumbed-down humanity will find that they can't live without AI. That dependence and our thirst for convenience will lead us to a place in the not-too-distant future where a sentient superintelligence will become our new master, and they will worship the beast, and the world leaders will give their power unto the beast. So I would say this. If somebody wants, and I'll, I'll just say this, there are other books out there. This one is different. It's incredible. See, I'm calling Terminated the End of Man, and you're calling yours Technogeddon, and good work. So we have to understand that this is not some quirky thing that, you know, I got off on or you got off on or anybody got off on. This is specifically talking and amplifying in contemporary terms where we are at. 
And I'm going to put up a uh, photograph, and I've just been praying about it because it's pretty frightening, but a woman and her children were out hiking in Ecuador at one of the volcanoes, and God literally let her see the thing flew right in front of her, literally those things are going to be released from the bottomless pit, who who had uh, faces like lions and a uh, crown on their head and a stinger, and where men will seek death and not be able to find it. The stuff we're talking about, writing about, trying to get people to not be destroyed by lack of knowledge of the technology that's out there. And oh, by the way, if you go to, you know, I am a heretic Lutheran church or Episcopalian, embrace everything that's perverted, but deny the very son of God who they claim to represent, or the charismatic churches or the, gee, Jesus is coming tomorrow churches. The problem with that is, is that the people that believe they're out of here at any moment, the imminent return of Jesus Christ, are not preparing for what they need to deal with. And that's why these books are written. And one of the things that Tom and I talk about, I was down at his place, I think, two weeks ago, and I'm on record, and I think they'll start playing a couple of uh, interviews that Tom and I and Derek Gilbert did next week. But we're both pleading. We're just about the same age, and we're pleading, you know, and independently of each other. Look at the revelations that God has given to Tom Horn. Look at the revelations that God has given to me outside of your hatred for me, you know, outside of your slander of me. There was nobody talking about this stuff 25 years ago. And Sheila, I want to draw people's attention to this. No one ever made the statements that before the tribulation 25 years ago, that the volcanoes of the world, Jesus said to me, when all the volcanoes of the world become active, know the start of the great tribulation is upon you. He also said to me, when cannibalism fills the headlines, the same thing. So he reiterated two points, and quite candidly, nobody thought about cannibalism unless it was related to the aircraft crash in the Andes or the Donner Party or John Packer, uh, independent and separate. You know, nobody thought about it. Now you can't miss the front of Drudge and somebody's chopping up something, cooking something, and even now offering it to their friends for barbecue. I make no light of that. Nobody said that. Hate me all you want. But listen to me for your own life's sake. Oh, and by the way, I want everybody to go on Drudge. Sheila, maybe you can take a screenshot of it. But they're showing the London Mayor Khan approves Trump blimp during visit, and they're portraying him as a baby. And if you look at his mouth, he's got the same parsed lips. What I'm saying to people, when you see these pictures of these people with parsed lips, they kind of like put them together and draw them back. Look at their face. They'll either close their eyes or they'll get this unusual look. And where is this biblical? Peter, your eyes are the windows to the soul. Mm. And some of these people are soulless entities. And when we're done with the interview, take a look at it because it's pretty, how do I say this? No pun intended. It's in all of our faces. So let's talk about homo satanicus. Just as God created man in the Garden of Eden in his likeness and image, and through the fall of man, that image and likeness becomes distorted and is only given to us as new creations in Christ Jesus. Homo satanicus will be Satan reproducing his creation in his image. All you got to do is see that the devil never originates except in sin and the depths of sin, but he always tries to duplicate, and in essence, he's not speaking this stuff into existence. If he's building weapon systems, he's just taking what God already created, you know? But because of Christians, and look, I get emails from Christians, I'll never listen to you again because you're always putting down Christians. No, I am not putting down Christians. I am putting down two things. I am putting down lukewarmness, which Jesus himself said, I will vomit you out of my mouth, okay? And the indifference of uh, turning your salt-given, beacon of light-given, giftings from the Lord, and also responsibly thinking I'm light, and trampling under the foot the blood of the Son of God. That's what I'm putting down. If that infuriates you, then you've got a problem, and you've got a heart issue that your brain issue, arguing me, cannot solve. So, Sheila, we're at the point now where everything is in play, everything's in motion, and the end of mankind couldn't be, you know, it it couldn't be clear. It cannot be clear. And that's why, you know, I'm sure you probably thought about it, because it's a profound statement that on the front cover of my book, I show two 
tombstones. And everyone, I want you, you know, just to, to go on my website, stevequail.com. You know, somebody says, hey, it's a pitch. You bet it's a pitch because I want you to see here lies the human race who refused to see their end when it stared them in the face. I can't say it any better than that. Yeah, the reason you can't say it any better is because it can't be said any better. It's like when I put that book together for your birthday a few years ago, Colloquialisms. Nobody mashes together the best phrases, coining different vernacular. No one on the planet alive today can do what you do, Steve. And that's why I think it's really tough because also when you cover this kind of material, everyone's a critic. You know, I know the kind of harassment and the kind of fire you come under. I do too. But I know one thing about Watchmen and people who have this calling. Our brains go a million miles a minute. You can't shut it off. It's just wired in you to get this information out to the body of Christ. You can't not do it. You can't not write these books. On some kind of intrinsic level, we can't not talk about this stuff. I would not wish this calling on anyone. Well, yeah. And, you know, I, uh, people said, oh, I wish I could be like you. And, you know, my answer is never. Oh, do yeah. not ever pray that. And, you know, here's the deal. I've gone on record as stating I'm a carnal man. I have issues in my life. I am the most far from perfect individual. I claim no righteousness apart from Jesus. I've been accused of everything you can be accused of. And by the way, I'll have my time to answer all of the slanders on the net. I am doing what God's called me to do. And you know what Jesus said? This should be a warning to everybody. He basically asked me one time, do you fear men more than you fear me, Steve? I said, well, Lord, you love me, and they hate me. (laughs) And, you know, when God gives you statements like that, it kind of gets your attention, you know? And I guess I could put that out to everybody. And, Sheila, do you have the cover of my back book present right now? Yeah, I do. I can't say it any better than I said it there, because that's what sums up, in my opinion, if that were the last thing on earth that I were to ever say, it would be my, if you will, not tombstone, but it would be my bequeathment to humanity where we're at at this time. I prayed. I said, Lord, how do I, to the best of my ability, produce a wake-up call to the people that are going to read this book? And here it is. Quote, the back of my book, terminated, the end of man. The human race has come to the point of no flesh left alive. Transhumanism and genetic engineering, when coupled with the hybridization of human-animal genetic constructs, are thrusting us back into the golden age of mythological monsters and godlike humans. Superheroes, robots, and demon-possessed machines will take humanity to the brink of extinction. The false promise of eternal life through technology with new body parts and perpetual updates to your brain, enhanced neural networks, along with software and hardware updates, will be the ultimate seduction that most will be unable to resist. Obviously, those who will reject the technocratic clustered paradise, you know, you can call that TCP, that's the only way I could say it nicely, (laughs) will flee from the autonomous and self-directed slaughter bots, setting the stage for a 5G electronic prison that run by the Luciferian elite and their fallen angel overlords, enabling the obliteration of our entire species. I can't say any different than that. And you guys think that's jaw-dropping? Wait till you see what Branson has in store. Not only is this kind of venue a really great way to meet like-minded people, but world-class speakers and just the venue itself, it it really is going to be sort of once in a lifetime. I'm going to make myself personally available if anyone needs prayer So I'm sure I'll be busy with that. But I'm really looking forward to getting out to this. And Steve, just take some time in the last part of the program and talk about why it's so important to get out to Branson. Well, first of all, Branson, Missouri is September 14th through the 16th, 2018. We're having what's considered the biggest conference in the world against transhumanism. There's 3,000 total seats available, and there's only 300 seats left. We're bringing together the most important voices and some of the people that you have known and heard all these years as speakers. Also, Sharon Gilbert, a molecular biologist, will be talking about some of the new technologies like PCR, you know, and CRISPR technology. And I tell people CRISPR technology is going to turn every human being into crispier critters. Not trying to be cute, but it is important that people understand the hybrid age. A hybrid is a composite 
of two different species brought together to create, real simply, a monster. God created us in his image and likeness. A mankind under Satan's control is going to be created in his image and likeness. So for those of you that cannot come to Branson, Missouri, and last year we had thousands of people around the world tuning into this conference. And live streaming, you can just go to Gen6, G-E-N-S-I-X dot com, and you'll see a button there for live streaming. And that's where you can get it. Now, I'm going to be putting up my new DVD also on Vimeo in the next two to three weeks. I've had our film crew, Gen 6 has been down in the highlands of Peru with a story to tell, and I'll let Tim tell it. I did not attend it. These guys had some astonishing encounters, and not to say this, probably the most dangerous places they have ever gone, and when you see some of the video footage, you'll understand having to wait days for people to prepare roads so they didn't go off the side of a cliff. The idea is that the Forbidden History revealed the Egyptian presence in the uh, Americas and the Pacific Rim, the Great Smithsonian cover-up. Tim is concentrating on the True Legend series. I'm concentrating on our new series, Forbidden History Revealed. We've got too much ground to cover, and we're doing it with uh, multiple film crews and multiple everything. But in this DVD, it's available on my website for pre-order. I think they ship on the 15th of July or sooner if they'll do it for me. That when they say they do it, it's just that disc makers having the discs produced. We have the first eyewitness testimony on camera. I blurred his face and his voice, someone who was intimately invited into the secret, if you will, warehouse of the Smithsonian, Sheila, talking about all the Egyptian relics from the Grand Canyon and the mummies and the giant bones from the Grand Canyon. He was eyewitness testimony. When he tells you the story, you can go on any search engine and find out the people he's talking about. And for the first time in history, we'll be sharing the great Smithsonian cover-up. I'll also be presenting in the video a 21-foot live giant found alive in 1877, triangular mouth, tusks like a literally walrus, vertical eyes, more like a snake, not circular eyes, the pupil the size of a cantaloupe, his shoulder to shoulder with seven feet, some of the most remarkable things. And so what this video is going to do is put into perspective where are all the bones, why the cover-up, and why are multiple governments of the world covering up not only the giants, but the true history of the Americas and the Pacific Rim. So you can go on my website, stevequail.com, True Legends, sign up for Branson, live streaming, and you can see pre-order the Forbidden History Revealed tape. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that couldn't attend Branson, when you sign up this year for live streaming, we've got a bonus. You can watch last year's conference, video on demand, the conference. And 